Good morning, Stacy. Good morning, Latoya. Just gonna pull this up on the computer. I don't know why I don't do this beforehand, but let me just open this. Hopefully we're only on here for like 30 minutes um, since there's only 10 verses. Hopefully, but we'll see. <laughs> um, okay, open it. Move this out of the way. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just quickly run through the things that I'm using. I'm going to pray us in and then we're going to start so that we're not here too long. Um, so for those who are either watching this later in the group who are new to watching it on YouTube, every time I do one of these kind of like Bible study sessions, um, I run through all the things that I use because I always get asked questions about that. So the first things first is I'm using a New King James translation. That is a translation that I prefer. I was using the ESV before, but I decided to switch over to the New King James. Um, you can always just use whatever translation works best for you. This is, I don't even know if this is going to show, the New King James Journal of the Word Bible from Thomas Nelson. This is not the reference edition because I know they came out with a new version of the Journal of the Word Bible and a reference edition. I don't own that one. I just own the original one in the, I think this is the turquoise or the teal hardcover floor, floral cloth overboard. Yeah, it's mine's is dirty and stained up and whatnot. But um, I have that. I have the notes for today, which is... Jonah chapter 2, which I'm entitling Belly of the Fish. And if you need the printable, you can just go on the blog and purchase those. I'm using an extra piece of paper for notes. I just have this notepad that I picked up from Office Depot, I think it was. I already have the one from last week where I put all the notes down. For writing in the Bible, I'm going to use the Pigma Micron 01 Archival Ink Pen. This pen is in a .25. Yeah, I think I want the um, reference edition too, just because it's like really pretty. But I don't know if it comes in the King James or the New King James. I know they have it in the NIV though, Latoya. So I don't know. I'm debating if I want an NIV Bible or not because the NIV Bibles that Thomas Nelson comes out with are really pretty. Um, I have an NIV Bible, but it's like a regular like basic on-the-go Bible. I'm still debating on whether I need to get it or not. <laughs> Um, to write on the actual, like, extra paper I have here. I just have this, um, fine point marker. It's called Optimus. It's a .7 fine point marker. I got it from my local discount store. So, yeah, it's kind of like a Sharpie, um, pen. I have the Crayola Twistable Colored Pencils for highlighting. My Zebra Mild Liners for highlighting. And I need to get the other two packs that are out because I'm just obsessed with these. I have my Crayola Super Tip markers for highlighting as well as the Sharpie Smeargot highlighters. I have the ones that don't have the clip. I get them for like 2 or $3 at my local uh, Rite Aid. Yes, the New King James is like one of my favorite translations. Like I grew up on the King James in church. Like I never knew that there was other translations of the Bible. Honestly, I didn't until maybe three years ago when I found out they had other translations but um, I just I don't know I love the new King James it's very similar to the King James but without that old kind of come hither to their wither and all that other stuff I don't like that but um I just I love this translation but yes I am going to oh that just looks really clear I don't know what happened I'm sorry guys every time I like record these videos and I'm looking at my computer for some reason, the footage is, like, very blurry, but today it's very clear. Oh, I see what they've done. Facebook did some updates. That's what it is. Okay. Awesome. But yeah, now I'm going to just... Person. You guys know I'm working on prayer. <laughs> So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for waking us up and for giving us working organs and limbs. Father God, I ask that you come into this study, that we may be able to glean something from these 10 verses within Jonah chapter 2, Father God. I'm asking for those that watch this either during the replay or later on on YouTube, that they are able to take whatever we discussed today and, and be able to apply it to their personal lives, Father God. Amen. All right, so 10 verses, two pages of notes. Hopefully this doesn't take long. It is 10.06. I am hopeful that we can be done by 1045, but probably not. <laughs> so, 
the way that I do this for those who are new or watching the replay or this is the first kind of Bible study video you're watching from me, I pretty much will read the scriptures either verse, not verse by verse, but um, section by section or paragraph by paragraph. In this case... I'm just going to run through and read all of Jonah chapter 2 because it's only 10 verses. So in this case, I'm going to read the complete chapter through without any highlighting notes or anything. The second time we go through, I'm just going to circle words that I want to define. And these are going to be words that I do know and words that I don't know. I do this because a lot of the times when the Bible was written, especially in the Old Testament, since Jonah is in the Old Testament, it was originally written in Hebrew. And the definitions that we use nowadays for words are not the same definitions that they used back in that time. So I like to look up the meaning in the original language, which for Jonah will be Hebrew. And sometimes I will look it up in English if I can't find the Hebrew definition, but most of the time I can. The third time I go through, I'll then underline parts of the verses, full verses, phrases, certain things that stand out to me. And then I take my notes, then I box and I add color because color always makes everything prettier and easier to find where I'm looking so I'm now just going to read through Jonah chapter 2 um, it's called Jonah's prayer and deliverance but I'm entitling it belly of the fish because this is the whole scene with him being in the belly of the fish and for some re reason we've said that it's a whale but I'm just gonna stick to it being a fish because that's what the Bible says so yes um, so chapter 2 verse 1 when Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from the fish's belly, he said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction, and he answered me. Oh, maybe I need to fix my camera. Yeah, let me fix this camera a bit. Oh, sorry about that. Just had to fix the camera. Okay. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your billows and your waves passed over me. Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. Verse 5. The water surrounded me, even to my soul, and the deep closed around me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the moorings of the mountains. The earth with its bars closed behind me forever, yet you have brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. Verse 7, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer went up to you, into your holy temple. Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. So the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. So that's it. I'm sorry, you guys didn't see the last part. <laughs> but I read all ten verses, so I'm going to go back now. And circle words that I wanted to find. Okay. And I only have four words, if I'm not mistaken. Four. Yes. Four words. So the first word is going to be in verse two. And that's going to be Sheol, which is on this page. So I'm going to circle Sheol in verse two. I'm going to circle in verse 3, past. Verse 6, I'm going to circle the word moorings. And the last word is in verse 7, it's going to be fainted. So I have Sheol, past, moorings, and fainted. Hopefully you guys can see that. So for Sheol, here's it, the word. Um, there's no like Hebrew or root word, but it means underworld, grave, or hell. For past, the Hebrew is abar. I think that's how you pronounce that. And it says to go over one's head. Moorings, I am not going to attempt, but this is the Hebrew word. And this is the root word in Hebrew. And it's a cut shape or extremity of the mountains, base or foundation. And then fated, here is the word, well, the Hebrew word rather, and it means to be overwhelmed. So, as always, um, I've already written them down so that it doesn't take too long. So now I'm just going to take some color and um, box it off.
not box it off, but circle the words. And we'll take this pink. Okay. So I just added the colors to match the colors here so that I know. So going back to verse 1 in the beginning of verse 2. So it says, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the fish's belly. Right here. Jonah prayed to the Lord his God in the fish's belly. And for me, I just put that in faith. Jonah prayed to the God that he knew. Um, we understand back in chapter one, Jonah deliberately disobeyed God. He went about things his own way. He tried to come out of the will of God. He tried to escape the presence of God. Um, and in doing so, he then caused trouble for people who had nothing to do with the situation. Um, so now he is... He was thrown overboard, basically, and thrown into the belly of a fish. So now he's inside of this fish's belly, and he knows the God that he serves. He knows that God is a faithful God, and he is now praying to the God that he knew. Um, and this, I think, is important because we see back in chapter 1 that he just didn't think to pray. He didn't care to pray, no matter how bad the situation got. So, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God in the belly of the fish, so... Um, in faith, he prayed to the God he knew. And then the second verse says, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction. So basically, when you're worried and concerned, God can hear you when you cry out. We can talk to him when we are troubled or distressed. I probably should have got another Bible because I always need another Bible. So let me grab my other Bible. Because I do have a cross reference. Um, so let me just find these cross references quickly. Sorry guys, just flipping to the cross references. I don't know why I never have these prepared way beforehand. Like never. But okay. So what I'm gonna say is that okay, I'm gonna underline I cried out to the Lord but God because of my affliction and I'm gonna say we can talk. To God when troubled or distressed. Cross references I have for that is going to be Psalms 18 and 6. And it says, in my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. He heard my voice from his temple and my cry came before him even to his ears so this is proof that we can cry out to him when we're distressed and then psalms 120 and 1 it says in my distress i cried to the lord he heard my i'm sorry in my distress i cried to the lord and he heard me deliver my soul oh god from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue i don't know why i read all of that but um it's going to be psalms 18 6 and then 120 verse 1 So there's proof in the scriptures that when we are distressed, we can cry out and pray to him um, and he will be attentive. What in the world is going on with life? Good morning, Tanya. Just adding my color. I 
Okay. Moving on, verse 2, it says, Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. So basically, Jonah felt as if he was at death's door, because we understand that um, Sheol is, where is it? It is either the underworld, grave, or hell. So he basically felt at death's door, um, and this is telling us that God can deliver you no matter how close to death you are, and even after death, his deliverance has no limits or boundaries. Um, so... I'm going to... Can you see this? Okay. My camera setup today is a little weird. I apologize. So what I'm going to say is... God can deliver... You no matter... How close to death... You are and even, even sorry, and even after. His deliverance, and I mean his power to deliver us when I say his deliverance, has no limits. So everything about God, um... We understand that there's no limit to his power. There's no limit to anything that he can do. So for this, I have Psalms 18. Again, if I can flip to it. So Psalms 18, 5 through 6, and that reads, The sorrows of Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he cried out to me. I'm sorry. And I cried out to my God, and he heard my voice from his temple, and my cry before came before him even to his ears so psalms 18 5 through 6 and the other cross reference i have is going to be psalms 86 verse 13 and it says um for great is your mercy toward me and you have delivered my soul from the depths of sheol i think that's how you say that sheol so So, verse 3, it says, you cast me into the deep. So now Jonah realizes it was not man that cast him into the sea, but God. He sees that he can never be out of God's hand no matter how much he tries to run. Um, and the cross-reference for that one is going to be Psalms 88 and 6. That says, you have laid me in the lowest pit in the darkest... I'm sorry. You have laid me in the lowest pits... In darkness in the depths so I'm gonna say God can cast you God can cast you out to get your attention But you're not forsaken. And I want, definitely want to make sure that's clear because um, many people will think that, oh, because God has cast you out, um, you're going to be forsaken by him. But that's not the case. When God does something so extreme, it's because you haven't been taking heed to all the things that he's been um, trying to tell you before. You weren't paying attention to the little signs and the little um Things that he was trying to use to get your attention. In this case, he was using the storm. He was using the uh, the 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 mariners, the captain on the boat. But Jonah obviously didn't care. He went to the bottom of the daggone boat and fell asleep. So God then had to now cast him out to make him feel forsaken to get him to understand that um, you need to be realigned. So again, the cross reference for that is going to be Psalms eighty-eight. And six. 
So he may cast you out, but you're not forsaken. Verse 4, it says, I have been cast out of your sight. So, and at this point, he now feels the pain of being separated from God. Um, when you're separated from God, there's like an emptiness. There is a bit of pain. There's like, there's a huge void. And it's not that um, God has left you. It's just that you personally have walked away from him, be it mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. Like you have walked away from God in some form or fashion to the point where now you can feel like, um, You've been cast out of his sight when you're technically not cast out of his sight. God has his eyes on you, but you have now taken yourself out of the view or you feel like you. Eh, well, yeah, you've taken yourself out of um, his view, if that makes sense. So. I have been cast out of your sight. I do have cross references for that as well. And I'm going to read all the cross-references today just because it's only like 10 verses. So why not? <laughs> um, so. He feels the separation. Is what I'm going to say. He feels the separation caused by. His own foolishness. The cross reference I have for that is going to be Psalms 31 and 22. And that says, For I said in my haste, I am cut off from you before your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the voice of my supplication when I cried out to you. So this is basically saying that um, we're quick to say, you know, God doesn't see us or God is not with us or we're separated from God. But if we were to cry out in the midst of saying that, God hears us, so therefore, how are you now separated from him if he hears you? Because if you're truly separated from God, God is not going to hear you. He's not going to, um, you know, help you. He's basically going to leave you to your own devices. So, Psalms 31 and, what is this, 22? 31 and 22. And then I have Jeremiah. Jeremiah is what I'm going to right now. And yeah, no, I'm not. Well, yes. I'm um, sorry. Jeremiah 7.15. I just had to check the verse um so jeremiah seven fifteen says and i will cast you out of my sight as i have cast out all your brother in the whole prosperity of ephraim um and that's basically in regards to the whole kingdom of uh, the nor northern israel um being put into exile um and even this is a great example when um god basically exiled his people um it wasn't that he separated himself from them, but he had to do something to get them realigned, to get them to understand their sins and to get them to really focus on him and nothing else. So, Jeremiah 7.15. Then it says, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. So now Jonah was determined to turn his heart towards God and remember the Lord that he served. So determined to, I'm going to say turn back to God because I'm, is it, yeah. Determined to turn back to God. That's what I'm going to say. Um, let me turn to this cross reference. So the cross reference I have is going to be Psalms 5 and 7. And it says, but for, yeah. But as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercy. In the fear of you, I will praise. 
But as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercy. In fear of you, I will worship toward your holy temple. So Psalms 5 and 7 is the cross-reference. Okay. Going to verse 6. I'm going to skip verse 5 because I don't really have much for verse 5. But for verse 6, um, it says, Yet you have brought up my life from the pit. So, Jonah can praise God for the answer to prayer before the answer came. God, I'm sorry. Jonah can praise God for the answer to his prayer before the answer came because God gave him assurance. He will be saved from death and the darkness that he's in. So basically, um, when we pray to God, a lot of the times, I know for me sometimes when I personally pray to God, there are some things that, you know, I should be 100% assured in, but I don't always praise him for the answer that I know I'm going to receive. Um, so when we're praying, we're supposed to know for a fact that God will answer our prayers he will answer the prayers according to his will according to his word but a lot of the times i know for me i don't i will pray and unfortunately sometimes i will have a little bit of doubt um or i won't be a hundred percent convinced even though i know god has a track record of always being true to his word and always being there never forsaking me and um just doing the best for me there's always some point where i will pray about something or pray for something and um, I won't always 100% be assured when I should be assured in an answer for that prayer. But Jonah already praised him before he got the answer because he knew, yeah, I may be in the belly of the fish. But if I cry out to God, God is going to answer me and God is going to help me. He's going to take me out of this pit. He's going to take me out of this darkness. And I think a lot of us need to start thinking with that kind of mentality um, that we don't have to wait for the answer to praise God. We can praise God before the answer, if that makes sense. Um, and I know, like I said in the previous video, I have a bad habit of saying, if that makes sense, I'm going to work on that, saying that a lot. <laughs> but, um, you know, Jonah, he messed up a lot in, in chapter one. He messed up a lot. But he knows that even though he messed up, even though he sinned, even though he deliberately walked away from God, um, he understands that he might be in this this kind of tough situation but he can pray and praise God for the answer to his prayer for being free from what he's going through and I, and I definitely know for me that's something that I need to focus on um because when I get stressed out or when I'm in I guess you could say some kind of darkness um or if I've indulged in some type of sin I will pray but I won't always a hundred percent um embrace the fact that God will answer the prayer according to his will. Sometimes I'm just like, well, maybe he won't. And actually on Sunday, my my bishop um, literally preached this on um, Sunday, which is funny. Um, how we tend to, um, how can I word this? Uh, basically, when God has already forgiven us, um, but we just don't forgive ourselves, we kind of, unknowingly sit in self-pity or um we wallow wallow is that the right word we we just sit in um our own condemnation so i feel like jonah though there are some things we shouldn't do from him and we've learned that we shouldn't do from him there are a lot of things within this book that he has done that we should take from him and i think this is one of those things where um he praised god for the answer to the prayer before the prayer i mean before the answer even came so he looked past his current situation and um saw how big god was and knew the god that he served so he could be assured and have confidence in god so I'm going to write, um, he prays God for the answer to his prayer before the answer. Assured that God 
would save him. So I have three cross references for that. The first one is going to be Job 33 and 28. And that says, He will redeem his soul from going down to the pit, and his life shall see the light. The second one is going to be Psalms 16 and 10. And that says, for you will not leave my soul in Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. And the last one is Isaiah 38 and 17. So Isaiah 38 and 17. That reads, indeed, it was for my own peace that I had great bitterness but you have lovingly delivered my soul from the pit of corruption, for you have cast all my sins behind your back. For Sheol cannot thank you, death cannot praise you, those who go down to the pit cannot hope for your truth. Um, so, cross references are Job 33, 28, Psalm 16, 10, and Isaiah. 3817. Oopsie. I'm going to add the color afterwards because I don't want to smear um, the black ink on the paper. Moving to verse 7, it says, When my soul fainted within me, Um, and basically, his heart was perplexed with a variety of fears, sorrows, temptations, and difficulties. When you're not aligned with God and you're not following his steps and his orders, your soul will feel burnt out. I spelled that wrong. <laughs> I swear, as I do these live sessions, I am editing notes, which is funny. Okay, um, I'm just going to flip back to my cross-references. I have two cross references for this. Come on, where are you? Okay. So, um, when my soul fainted within me, I'm gonna write heart perplexed. With variety. Fear, sorrows, difficulties, that's chicken scratch. <laughs> when not aligned I'm gonna say your soul feels worn. Um so when my soul fainted within me, and we know that fainted is to be overwhelmed. So basically, his soul felt overwhelmed. And your soul can feel overwhelmed when you're not aligned with God. And when you're not aligned with God, you tend to um, act on your emotions. And it's not to say that we're not going to feel fear, we're not going to feel sorrow, we're not going to be tempted, and we're not going to have difficulties. Um, but as a Christian, we are to know that even in the midst of those feelings, in the midst of our difficult situations, we have a God that um, is bigger than everything. So that's just a reminder of that. Um, and the cross-references for that are going to be Psalms 142 and 3. That says, when my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then you knew my path and the way in which I walk. They have secretly set a snare for me. And then also 143 and 4. That says, therefore, my spirit is overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is distressed. And um, those were both, I believe, Psalms from David. Yeah, 
those are both songs for David. 142 was a plea for relief, and then 143 was an appeal for guidance and deliverance. So I just use that as like examples that um, even a man after God's own heart, you know, felt like he was overwhelmed within his soul with everything that was going on. And for him, that was with the fear of being um, killed by Saul. The sorrow he felt for the problems between him and Saul, the temptation to kill Saul. Um, and the difficulties just in general with having to be on the run from Saul. So um, that's why I use those cross-references. So 142 and 3 and 143, 4. Yes. Going to verse 8. Um, it says, those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy. So for that, um, Jonah realizes that resisting God, running from him, is like being an idol idolater. I think that's how you say that word. Um, so we can appreciate or appropriate the mercy God desires to bestow on us if we have idols. I think I wrote that wrong. I definitely wrote that wrong. <laughs> so I'm just going to say Jonah realizes that resisting God um, and running from God is like being an idolater. So resisting and running... From God. Let me make a note here. I need to fix this. <laughs> From God. Makes you an idolater. And the reason that I say that is because um, you're now putting yourself above God. You're putting yourself um, before him. You're putting your personal needs before him. And um, that means that you're worshiping yourself and not God. You're putting you as number one and God as number two. And that shouldn't be the case. Um, I need to definitely go back later on and fix these notes. So verse 9, it says, But I will sacrifice to you. So Jonah repents from running away from God and he turns to God with sacrifice and thanksgiving. So He repents and turns to God. Cross reference I have for that is going to be Psalms 50 and 14. It says, Offer to God thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. Right? Yes. Then it says, I will pay what I have vowed. Good morning. Is it Janine? I feel like I'm saying it wrong. I'm going to say Maribel. Good morning, Maribel. <laughs> I am very hungry. Oh, my God. I think I'm going to eat after this and then prepare for BSF because I have BSF at 11 o'clock. And I was late last week, so I'm going to hope that I can be done within the next 10 minutes. So I'm not late to be a sub today. <laughs> um, but where was I? I will pay what I have vowed. Okay. 
So basically, he will pay his vows to God and do whatever God tells him to do. We all have told God we will do whatever he wants us to do and sometimes find ourselves running. We must stop resisting God. So in this case, Jonah is a prophet. Jonah has made a vow to God before the people probably. I don't know what was the custom back then for prophets if they had to, um, you know, make a specific kind of vow before the people i i don't personally know um that's actually something i should probably look up to know but um you know he, he definitely made a vow before god um when he became a prophet so you make a vow and then you don't abide by your vows it, it's kind of like you're breaking a covenant in a sense um i don't think it's as i mean it's bad it's like bad to break a vow it's kind of like breaking a covenant but it's not as bad as breaking a covenant I don't know but um you know it's kind of like I t okay so I had prayed and um you know I, I told God that I wanted to get back into dancing and for those of you who don't know I do dance in my church I've been dancing in church ooh, since I was 10 maybe 10 9 years old I don't even know I've been dancing all my life so um I enjoy Praising God and worshiping God through the art of dance. I love liturgical dance. Um, I like dance in general, hip hop, ballet, jazz, all like dance is my life. But um, liturgical dance really has like a special place in my heart um, because it allows me to freely move with my body, freely um, sacrifice to God with praise and worship. And there was a time where I completely just stopped um, dancing and stuff because of the depression and everything that I was dealing with. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about as far as depression, I did a whole um video on it on youtube but th there's a lot of stuff that um kind of caused me to stop dancing for years and um i would watch other other girls in the church dance i would watch dance ministries and there would be something in my heart cracking because there was a desire to dance but i just i i didn't want to do it because i was just dealing with too much and i kind of put my emotions um in front of everything and I had told God that I would get when I, I really wanted to get back into it. So I did get back into it last year. But um, even with that, there was a part of me that was resisting. And um, I started to run away from it again. But God wasn't having it. So he pulled me right back. And I find myself battling every now and then with um, wanting to dance. But then I get nervous, especially where God has me going as far as dance now. Um, I'm the type of dancer where I need choreography. I, I just, I love choreography. That's just me. I love choreography. I like looking at a routine. I like creating routines. I love it. Um, but God has me going in a complete different kind of way as far as stepping out of choreography and freely just dancing um, without a routine, without choreography. And I can't stand it <laughs> like I truly can't stand it and I'm just like I know I prayed for him to um open more doors for me to dance I also prayed that he would allow me to minister to his people in the way that he saw fit and the way that he's doing that is just like I don't like it and I keep running from it but you know I struggle with that literally every month because every every third Sunday which is pastoral Sundays at my church I have to dance my first lady requested of me to dance every third Sunday and um it's a struggle luckily I don't gotta dance this month or next month because <laughs> this month is a woman's service so uh, the dance ministry is dancing as a whole and the next month is um the next month third Sunday is Easter Sunday Resurrection Sunday so I don't gotta dance by myself either so you know I got two months to get my my kind of dance together but I have made a vow to him that I would you know dance according to the way that he would have me to dance i made that vow i said that i wanted to minister to his people the way he desires for me to minister and he has given me the songs he has told me what i need to do but i consistently run from it because i find it hard to do um so i like that jonah here is saying that he will pay what he has vowed because it's personally a reminder to me that I need to pay what I have vowed. I vowed to minister to his people according to his desires. And I haven't always been doing that. I've been running. I've been trying to do things on my own when it comes to dance. It never works out like ever. I always end up stressing myself out, crying my eyes out instead of just doing what I said. So that's just like an example of how I personally can relate to him saying I will pay what I vowed. I mean, there's other ways, obviously. But for me, I think... Um, with liturgical dancing it's very prominent because that's something that I struggled with for a minute I prayed to him and asked him to open doors and I vowed to him that I would do things according to his way um, but I 
just been like, no, I don't want to do it that way. I try my way and then I stress out. So yeah, that's just how I can relate to that to that verse. But um, I'm going to. So what do I want to say? Okay, I'm actually gonna write these notes on paper because I don't want to take up space. And somebody just called my phone. I got a voicemail. I don't know who that was. Was it my mama? <laughs> uh, no, I don't know who it was. Probably someone that I don't need to um speak to right now. So, verse 8, right? No, I'm lying. That's verse 9. Verse 9. I know that the autofocus goes in and out when my hand is in the frame, so I'm going to move my hand when I'm done. But I'm going to say... Oopsie. Jonah. Pays his vows to do. Whatever God. Tells him. We vow to do. His will, his way. But sometimes find ourselves resisting. Running. I'm sorry. Find ourselves running. Must stop resisting. Okay, so what I wrote is, for verse 9, um, Jonah pays his vows to do whatever God tells him. We vow to do his will, his way, but sometimes we find ourselves running, must stop resisting. Um, and the cross-reference I have for that is going to be Ecclesiastes 5, right? 5, 5, 5, yes, 5, 4 through 5 um, is the cross-reference. I'm going to read that. Um, four through five, four through five. It says, when you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it for he has no pleasures in full. Pay what you have vowed better not to vow than to vow and not pay. And uh, that, that's just like a smack in the face. Personally, um, when you say you're going to do something to God, when you make that vow, you need to do it. Um, if you delay, you're a fool. And if it, it, it's better that you just didn't make the vow in the first place, because, um, it wouldn't put you, um, in a position to, I guess, in a sense, be pu punished. And I'm saying punished with, like, my fingers going, like, quotation marks because I, I don't think it's, like, punishment. But, um, you know, it's better that you just would have never made that vow than to have made it and then delayed or not follow up on it. So, um, I kind of like that verse. Okay. Um, so then it says, salvation is of the Lord. And, you know, God has saved, will save, and continues to save. Simple as that. He is, I mean, there's nothing else to say. So, salvation is of the Lord. <clears throat> God has saved, will save, and continues to save i mean his saving will never cease he will always save oops sorry guys give me one second Okay, the cross reference I have for that is going to be Psalms 3 and 8. And that says, salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing is upon your temple. Selah. So, Psalms 3 and 8 is the cross reference for that. Okay. 
And the final verse is um, verse 10. And it says, so the Lord spoke to, I'm sorry, did you guys even see that? So salvation is of the Lord. God has saved, will save, and continues to save. And the cross reference is Psalms 3 and 8. So then it says in verse 10, so the Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. So I'm going to underline the Lord spoke to the fish. And then. It vomited Jonah onto dry land. Okay. So, verse 10. The Lord spoke to the fish. Um, so, the fish worked at God's command um, just as much as the fish was under the command of God when it swallowed Jonah. It was under his command when it let him go. So, I'm going to put everything is under God's command. Man and beast and nature dot dot dot. So everything is under God's command. Man beast and nature dot 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 because um he controls everything i mean he's sovereign over everything i'm gonna put that he's sovereign i feel like i spelled that wrong probably didn't anyway on the back of this paper verse 10 um it says it vomited jonah onto dry land so Basically, sometimes we don't have much of a choice about how we will be delivered. Jonah might have preferred another method, but God had a purpose in um, his method. So deliverance came after Jonah's repentance was complete. We see that he was delivered after he repented throughout verses one, um, 2 through 9. And then um, it wasn't that he was just sorry for what he did, but he was now trusting God again. Because he didn't trust God in chapter 1. We know that. He was just like, no, God, you wrong. I ain't about to go tell these Ninevites. Ninevites? Because I already say that, Ninevites. <laughs> I'm not about to go tell the people of Nineveh. I'm going to just say Nineveh because I feel like Ninevites is wrong. But I'm not about to go tell these people from Nineveh that are evil and wicked that they need to um, repent before they die. I'm not about to do it. So he didn't trust God's choice. He didn't trust in God's power um, to be able to save whoever he wanted to. He forgot that God was sovereign. So then God, you know, used a storm in the belly of a fish to make him repent. And understand who was sovereign. So. Um, and I'm pretty sure he, that vomit wasn't like a dry vomit. He was probably vomited on the land with some nasty just mucus and just. I don't know. When I think of vomit, it makes me want to vomit personally. I don't, I don't like vomit. It, it, it's just disgusting to me. So trying to Im imagine a big fish vomiting you after you've been in his body for three days no telling what else he put in his body to consume ill um but it just reminds me that we don't have a choice how we're delivered god will deliver you how he sees fit and sometimes that deliverance is not easy it's a struggle i mean for me I just, <laughs> it was a struggle um my deliverance took some time and it was a major struggle but um the way he delivers you is sure to set you free rather than the way you personally want to be delivered um everything god does has a purpose everything he does is for your better um and it's always best it's it's perfect everything he does is perfect so sometimes we don't have much of a choice about how we are delivered Jonah's deliverance came after repentance
and that is it for chapter two so i'm just gonna add color now because i need color i don't i don't like the blandness of this page it's it's bothering my eyes that was extra i didn't need to say all that but <laughs> um yeah, I feel like Jonah is a really good book to study. It's one of those books that I don't think many people really take the time to study because we all just think about, can I zoom out? Oh, I can. Yay, they can do this now. See, before when I was using live, I wasn't able to zoom in and zoom out in the middle of a video. Now I can, so let me zoom out. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you know, I don't think many of us have really taken the time to actually study the book of Jonah just because we know the story of Jonah. Um, you know, he's eaten by the belly of the fish. He disobeyed God. But when you actually take time to read the book of Jonah, you actually learn a lot. It wasn't that he was just disobedient. Um, but even in his disobedience, he understood, you know, that he was wrong. He repented. And though he still decided to be foolish, which we'll learn in chapters three and four, um, he got that nothing was in his control everything was controlled by god god was the one who was in power he was all powerful obviously he's all knowing i did this so wrong oopsie okay let's just color that in and color that in there we go um what was i saying i don't forgot what i was saying but Oh, that's what I'm saying. So, yeah, um, he understands that now God is the only one that can. Um... No, I, I really did forget what I was saying. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I'm sorry, guys. Give me a second. I'm trying to remember what goes with what so i'm not making a mistake when i'm highlighting again yeah i went blank um guys so i don't remember what i was even speaking about <laughs> but yeah ow that absolutely just hurt Look at that. I made a mistake again. So what I'm going to do is just highlight this whole portion. Because I just don't care right now. Oh, what I'm talking about with the mistake is that I highlighted it in two different colors, which is wrong. Because it should be purple. So I just highlighted the whole text so that I know when I'm looking at my notes later what's going on. But, yes. Um, that's pretty much it, you guys, for today. 10 verses we did use a whole hour <laughs> um and that's fine but i will chat with you ladies later because i need to get to bsf like asap because they're starting now so if you have any questions you can definitely just message me comment below and i need to actually get into the habit of watching the replays because i know that you guys comment during the replays when you watch them but i just never pay attention so i'm going to get into the habit of watching replays once a week so that I can answer you guys' comments. But if you have a comment, question, or anything, post it in the group. Um, message me if you need to. And I will chat with you all later. You're welcome. I hope you guys have a great day. And we'll meet next week for the next chapter. Bye.